Hello and welcome back to the There's Something About Mary special. Coming up next, we have part two of the top 10 countdown. Before I get into the countdown, I just want to apologize for this episode being late. I had to take a small hiatus, hiatus, because literally shit hit the fan a couple of days ago. Um, it involved cat, it involved cats and my neighbor, my neighbor was in a coma, he's out, thank the Lord Jesus, but... There was just way too much happening for me to be able to function. So I appreciate you sticking with me. And I'm really excited for you to hear the remainder of the top 10 countdown. It only gets crazier from here. So prepare yourselves. Also, when I do the pod, I never want to be, you know, like I force myself to do it. I need to be in the right headspace. And I want to give you the complete, genuine Mary Grace when you hear it. So hopefully that doesn't happen again, but I just wanted to fill you in on what was going on in my Liz life. But um, yeah, let's get, let's hop right back into this countdown. Number six. So this shenanigan happened when I was working at PLJ and PLJ was right above MSG at the time. So I was in the city And I had a break. I had like a break in between my shifts when I worked for the street team at WPLJ, which also was under the umbrella of Nash FM, um, WABC, and Radio 103.5 with La Loca. Love that woman. So back to my story. I was on a break in between my shifts and... I always read the filming signs in the city when they have to stop traffic and that you won't be allowed to go down that street. I always read the signs because I always want to know what they're filming. So I went up to one of the colorful signs on one of the posts and it was for like a Maybelline. It was like a Maybelline commercial they were going to do there. And as I was reading that, this man that looked like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo comes up to me wearing all green but the catch is here that he wasn't just wearing all green he was wearing the same exact shade of green shoes socks shorts shirt and hat the exact same shade so i mean it really makes me think how did he get all of those pieces of clothing because you know you can't usually find all of that in one place so i can only imagine so right when i saw that i thought that was you know a little different but he approached me quickly and he was like what are you looking at and i am a very nice person and i can't help but interact with strangers it just happens and i should sometimes just walk away briskly but i don't i entertain anyone that approaches me and I shouldn't but it just happens and I can't help myself so he comes up to me and he was like oh so what are you reading and I was like oh it's like uh it's a Maybelline commercial they're gonna shoot here I always read these and he was like oh really what's that and I was like oh like Maybelline the makeup commercial and he was like oh and I was like all right well and then I started walking and he was walking with me so His Where's Waldo looking ass is walking right to, like, he's on the side of me, one side of me. And then this man that looks like the game, the rapper the game, he approaches me. So I have Shaggy slash Where's Waldo, Green Where's Waldo, standing right next to me. And then the game approaches me as well. So I have him on the other side. And he's like, yo ma, can I catch a dollar? I just got out of jail. And also, he has a bunch of face tattoos as well one may or may have not have been a teardrop i was like 
um, sir, I'm sorry, I actually don't have any money. Because whenever I have money and somebody asks, I always give it to them. Because I always think if I was in that situation, I would want people to help me. And it's just important to help anybody when you can. And I just hope that the money always goes uh, toward the right thing. But I never mind helping people. But I really, I only had my card. And I told him I only have my card. And that's when Shaggy makes a, a darts off to the right. And he's out. And he was like, the game was like, oh, where's your friend going? And I was like, that guy's not my friend. I don't know who that guy is. I don't know that man. And he's like, all right, well, he was like, thanks. And I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. And I wish I had, you know, a couple bucks. I'll give it to you. And he was like, yo, you single? That's when I replied with, yes, I'm single and not looking. I'm with myself right now. And I'm very happy with that. And he was like, you know what? I respect that. And uh, I was like, thank you. I appreciate it. And then he said, but you need a you need a man who's going to massage your feet. And I could do that for you. And I was like, oh, you know, I think I think I'm good. But I appreciate the offer. He was like, no problem. Where's Waldo left my ass out to dry? He made that quick U-turn, that real quick U-turn, that illegal U-turn. But... And, you know, in all honesty, I was more afraid of Shaggy and his complete outfit of exact green shade versus the man with the face tattoos. Not even that I was afraid, but just definitely more perturbed by the man wearing all green. Like, if I had to choose to be locked in a room with, you know, one or the other, I'm 100% choosing the guy with the face tattoos and the admiration for foot massages because at least I know what he's about he's telling me right then and there what he's about and what he wants versus Shaggy what was his deal what was Waldo's deal what did he want and as soon as he when he left my small group that was forming he went up to some other people so very interesting characters and it's a moment I won't forget but I wish I could have been third person watching that encounter happen. But, you know, I look forward to more of those situations happening in my near future. Number seven. I went skydiving in Florida in 2017. And the reason I went in Florida was I was down there, but I mainly went there because it's only $150 compared to New Jersey's $350. But you know, with that that lack of price, you know, you're definitely giving up some liberties and some freedoms. So when I went there, I was reading the reviews online and somebody died there. But it was because they, they jumped out of a plane drunk. Awful tragedy. But I told myself, hey, you know, I'm going with somebody like tandem. That's what it's called when you jump out of that plane with somebody else. So I was like, you know, there's nothing for me to worry about. Um, but I went there and the first thing they do is they sit you in a room and they have you watch a safety video and it's like the guy from Dos Equis. I usually don't drink, but when I do, it's Dos Equis. that guy. So it looked like that guy and it sounded like that guy. And I was so interested in the fact that it looked like him that I really wasn't paying attention. But I did hear that they said, if you die, that's not our problem because you signed the paper. So... I thought about that for a few seconds, but I said, hey, you know, if I'm going to live this daredevil lifestyle, I got to just do things and not really think about it. So that's what I did. But then I go out to the plane area where you have to get ready and you put on your jumpsuit and all that. And my instructor comes over to me and he's like, yo, dude. And I was a little, a little perturbed, a little perturbed because his shirt had a ghost doing a bong. So that attire throws me off a little bit. That's cool and all. But not when you're my you're my friggin' Siamese twin, when you're my safety net, when you're attached to my body, when your body's attached to my body, you're gonna wear a shirt like that. But I couldn't switch my instructor. I was I'm stuck I was stuck with this man. And uh he had a few teeth missing. So it was just all around you know, I told myself, you know, I'm probably going to die today and that's okay. 
you know, I'm doing it. If I die, I, at least I did it. I was taking a chance. I was risking it for the biscuit. You know, that's what you have to do in life. You know, no risk, no reward. And I wanted to do that, to do that for a long time. And I told myself, if it happens, it happens. I'm doing something really cool. So at least I go out with a bang. You know what I'm saying? So next thing you know, we're on the plane. And he tells me this joke. And he says, how many cats can fit in a tin can? Because, you know, like people from Florida, like country sort of. So that's what he told me. And I was like, um, um, I don't know. Cause I'm, I'm too busy thinking about my mortality. And he was like, I, I think I said something. I was just like 16. Cause that's my favorite number. So I said that, um, and just to like, just quiet him a little bit because I'm trying to meditate, you know, while I'm freaking uh, 16,000 feet in the air. So he was like, none silly. The can was closed. And I was just looking at him like all horrified. Because this, this, this is not the time for jokes. So, as he, he tells me that joke, and then I realize everyone's jumping out of the plane already. Everybody's hooked up and jumping out of the plane. And I, I'm looking at our setup, me and him, and he hasn't attached me to him yet. And I was like, are you going to, like, hook me up to you? Like, you don't even clip me in yet. And I'm, like, doing the, the sign of the cross, like, Jesus, Mary, Joseph. Um, that's not it, but... I was, I was just praying and saying a bunch of religious things because I was really scared. Um, and then he whispers to me, he says, don't worry, I'm a professional. And that didn't make me feel comfortable at all. That made me feel even more nervous because he told me he was a professional. You know, if a professional is a professional, they usually don't have to tell you that they're a professional. But he hooked me up. And as soon as we hopped out of that plane, he was like, you want to do something cool? And I was like, yeah. He's like, you want to do a backflip? And I was like, hell yeah. Because if I'm going to die, I might as well do some friggin' uh, 360 kickflips while I'm up there. You know what I'm saying? So we jump out. And uh, I was having the time of my life, honestly. That was the coolest 10 minutes of my existence, I must say. Because we did the flip. And then, you know, skydiving feels like if you're jumping into a pool, but there's no water in the pool. And you're just falling, like the pool's way down. That's what, it, like, I thought of how it would feel. And it's, like, pure ecstasy. I've never done drugs, like, hardcore. You know, I, I really I haven't even done drugs. So I don't, I don't even know why I had to say, like, hardcore. You know, like, I'm doing other things. But I haven't done any hardcore drugs. But I imagine that's what, like, cocaine on steroids feels like. like a girl can, can imagine. I don't know. But uh, that's how it felt. Just pure ecstasy. Euphoria. You just feel so awesome. Like you just, I felt so alive. I felt so free, so alive. And he did this cool thing where he was like, he was like explaining to me about gravity and stuff like that. And he's been doing it for 15 years and his parents grew up skydivers and stuff like that. So this guy has it in his DNA. So I shouldn't have been worried the whole time, but it's just, you know, other things led me to believe otherwise. So he did this thing where we could sit on air if he he had to do it at a certain spot that we were in, but there was a point where we were just sitting on air still. Like he, he sat and he told me to sit sort of, and we both sat and he was working the parachute in a way where the air was holding it up. So it wasn't descending downward. So we were literally sitting on air and it was silent up there, which is so cool. Like you just hear the earth. There's like there's like nothing. You don't hear birds or anything. And you're just sitting still in the air. And I saw like, you know, some lakes and stuff. And it was cool. Like, who would have thought this dude with a ghost bong shirt would be able to have me defy gravity in a way. But I give that place a 10 out of 10. Highly recommend. Zephyr Hills. Zephyr Hills, Florida. That's where I went. I didn't see no Zephyrs, Mother Zephyrs, I didn't see none of them. If those are even real, I don't know. Have you ever seen a Zephyr? I haven't, so if you haven't seen one, are they? do they really exist? Number eight. So in high school, I wanted to be a rapper for some time. A few months, maybe, a few months. I remember when Iggy Azalea's work came out. I was truly inspired because she was a white female rapper, and I said, this is my chance to break out in the industry because this is happening right now. And I remember I was listening to work in my room, sitting up at the ceiling, thinking about all of my future opportunities and 
future accomplishments as a rapper would be. You know, sometimes you do that when you're just like, wow, this is a really awesome thing I'm thinking about. And you're just thinking about all the possibilities that can happen. So that was me. And that was my senior year of high school. Iggy gave me hope. So there was a talent show at my school. And for the talent show, my friends and I wanted to dance to well the first time the first talent show we had we did i could show i could i could lift you up that friggin song by the lumineers or something it's definitely not the lumineers it's somebody else and they had that song so we danced to that and we danced to roar by katy perry and that was that was really interesting and i remember my remember i'm the only white kid at the school and my teacher was like hey do you want to perform that in front of the the class, like the school? And we we're like, no. Like I told my friends, like that's social suicide. But we didn't. Thank the heavens. Well, honestly, now that I'm older, that's cool. Like you know, whatever people think, I, I really don't care. And he, I didn't even really care then, but I just don't want to get like, you know, nobody at my school gave a shit about Katy Perry, or gave a shit about the guys who sang. I could get live. I could lift you up. Like, that reminds me of the time at my school we had this drunk driving pledge where the guys from drunk driving came in. I don't know uh, what group that was. The, a dare. But it wasn't dare because that's... I don't know if that even exists anymore. But it was like a dare offshoot. It was like driving safely. It was like the company. And they came to our school and they gave us drunk goggles. And it, it like blurs your vision. And like it's, I was like, this is really cool. And I, you really do feel like that when you're drunk. So the goggles were cool. I'm not promoting any kind of... Um, uh, shenanigans guys on this podcast but take it as you will so I remember the guy was like hey you know if you guys get uh so and so amount of pledges you can have Kelly Clarkson perform at your school and I was the only like I, I like on the inside I was like clapping a little bit like I like I smiled on the inside but I remember you could hear a pin drop I, I remember when they did that I was excited I was like damn you know I love Make a wish, break away, and break away. I'll spread my wings and I'll learn how to fly. I love that song. So when they said that, I was like, <laughs> and then I realized like everybody was silent. So I was like, <laughs> and then I just stopped because we weren't getting those pledges. You know, maybe me and my, my family were going to get, we were going to, you know, sign that certificate. But other than that, it was not going to happen. My dad and sister even claimed that I look like Kelly Clarkson. And my dad was like, yeah, man, you should go to one of those, one of her shows and she can see you and then see what happens. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say to that. I mean, I, you know, I don't like to look like anybody. I like to look like Mary Grace Sopran, but I can see the, the commonality there. And my sister said I should go on the street and pretend to be Kelly Clarkson and then also see what happens. So... That might be something in the future. So look out for that. In that gym. In that gym. I was the only one that was like, oh, you know, that's that's pretty cool, you know? Like, thinking that in my head. But I was, like, looking around, and it got silent in that in that gym. Um, yeah, my school was, like, 70% black and then 30% Spanish, and then point, point zero 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 one me. And then my Asian friend. But that was fantastic. So I knew right then in that moment we, aren't, we weren't getting Kelly Clarkson in that gym. There was no way. There was no way. And even all the people didn't raise their hand about not driving drunk. The guy was like, hey, are you guys all not going to drive drunk? Raise your hand. And I put my hand up. I'm not driving drunk. And then everybody, like, there were, there were a good amount of kids that didn't raise their hand. Well, not driving in their vehicles anytime soon, that's for sure. But back to what I was saying. So we performed Roar by Katy Perry uh, in the first talent show, and I Could Lift You Up, that song. You could be my luck, because I keep getting, you know, messed up with the, with the stanzas there. So that was for the first talent show. And then for the second talent show, me and my friends decided we wanted to be more seductive, more sensual. So we chose Katy Perry's Dark Horse. And uh, we love that part. It's like, And it just, it, that is another song that was just not a good choice for a Catholic school event because there, there are some dark meanings to that song that I didn't even think of, you know, that I, I didn't even real, realize it at the time. So that's great. But we were, we were performing that for the second talent show. And I remember me and my friends were in the gym 
we were that was the day of the talent show and we were just hanging out there all day until nighttime came when the show was going to happen and we were all hanging out on stage and the lights were off and there were very few teachers in the building i think only the my teacher that was running the talent show was in the building so the lights were off and it was just like her in the school but she was like on the third floor and then it was just whatever kids were hanging out and we were in the gym and one of the people plugged up their phone and the microphone so I guess they were going to rehearse or they were just finished rehearsing and they plugged it up and I remember I said this is my chance so I was like give me that microphone to this guy uh, at my school who would randomly do backflips all over the place and then he gave me the microphone and it was cool some of my friends were standing like in front of the stage pretending that they were fans and they were screaming and trying to grab my feet and stuff like that because I was going to perform. You knew once I got that microphone, I was there to perform. And mind you, this is this is when I discovered Iggy Azalea. So he gives me the mic and I'm like, You can hate it, love it. Hustling the struggle is the only thing I'm trusting. Throw bread in the mud brick for the budget. White chick on that passion. My passion was ironic and my dreams weren't common. Guess it's going crazy. First deal changed me. Rob line basically most of the bullshit like a metador. Just made me matter and animate to go out of me in the score. So I went harder. Studied it harder till the deal was offered. Slept cold in the fourth quarter and at four in the morning. Now I'm passing the ball like a lawyer. Immigrant or ignorant. Your intent was insurance on my benefit. Hate to be inconsiderate, but the industry took my innocence. Too late now I'm in this bitch. Y- y- y'all don't know the half. This shit get real. Valley girls giving bloat jobs for Louboutins. What you call that? Head over heels. No, 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 no money, no family. 16 in the middle of New Jersey. No money, no family. 16 in the middle of New Jersey. And I changed that last lyric there. It was no money, no family, 16 in the middle of Miami. And I changed it to no money, no family, 16 in the middle of New Jersey. So I just dropped that fire. I just dropped that heat, that straight heat. So then my English teacher, who is also the woman who was running the talent show, walks in in complete awe. And she was like, you need to do that for the talent show. Whatever that was, you need to do that for the talent show. That was amazing. And I guess she didn't hear what that entire song is about because there are curse words and um you know there's some uh speaking of some spe- uh, sexual acts going on and she was like you know you really should like I could fit you in we'll make sure you know you do that for the talent show you're great and I love that woman for that I love that woman for that and I remember I, I wanted to risk it for the biscuit like this was my Disney moment this was my newspaper moment Like, I was going to become infamous from this. And in high school, I was like, you know, this is a big deal. I should do it, you know. I really should. I really wanted to do it. And I was like, who cares about what the parents think? You know, I'll be the coolest kid in the school. That was, like, what I was thinking. And um, I remember I asked my parents, and they are like, absolutely not. Uh, You definitely should not do that. And um, I think it would have been, I don't think it would, I don't think it would have made the newspaper. And that would have been my goal. I don't think it would have made the newspaper. Uh, I think I would have gotten into a lot of trouble. But it most definitely would have been the one of the coolest things ever. I think in history of planet Earth. I mean, come on. That's like what happens on a a sitcom, you know? Like I was literally rapping about blowjobs and... I was asked by my AP English teacher to perform that rap at the talent show after performing Katy Perry. Like, that would have been the coolest shit to get suspended for. And she came in like Yoda. She was like, do it for the talent show, will you? For the talent show? Wait, I need to, let me just get, let me get myself together here. You do that for talent show? I don't know what happened there do that for talent show will you there we go there we go i don't know what happened with that earlier one but bless that woman's heart you know i'm a risky biscuit but i'm happy i didn't i didn't risk it for the i would have risked it for the complete biscuit if i did it if i did that in high school and i'm happy you know in a way i wish i could have 
play it out to see what would have happened. Because there would have been some crazy consequences. But, you know, I'm happy I, uh, I went down with my little, my, uh, you know, I, I, I was born and I, and I died with a good reputation there. So, life and times of Bridgemont High, you know. And on top of that, our group name, our dance group name, when we were dancing to Katy Perry's Dark Horse, sensually, the name that I came up with was Widget Fob, which was W G T O. No, no, no. W G T F O B B, which stood for White Girl Team Full of Bad Bitches. So that was also problematic, but nobody asked what it stood for. They put it in the yearbook. Nobody asked, so it was like, don't ask, don't tell. And uh, it had a secret meaning this whole time. And if somebody were to ask, I was going to tell them, but nobody asked. So it was a fob. And that was pretty awesome. And it was cool because we had a very mixed group. Our group was, we were uh, like, we would call ourselves the United Nations, but it never stuck with anybody else, only our group. Because um, it was me, and I pretty much represented Europe. And then I had... Um, a Spanish friend, a black friend, an Asian friend, and an Egyptian friend. So that was as diverse as it gets. And we were over there, you know, shaking it and kicking it and punching it and, uh, you know, moving them, moving them bodies up there. You know, that's what we were doing. And we had a blast. And I would say we, we brought the house down. I think people really loved it. I think at first, you know, it took, a, it took a few seconds for people to clap. Like they were a little, you know, trying to understand it. But I guess, like I said before, great art is always criticized. So I just, I think that people were so amazed at what they saw that they, they, that they couldn't react fast enough to clap. And do I regret not performing that? No. Like I'm happy I, I had that moment for myself where I was performing and I was completely in the moment and I had my screaming fans my friends and I was I was I unleashed that fire dropping potential rapper Mary Grace Zapran I completely unleashed her and I just I don't think the world would have been ready for it if I would have done it in that time because they weren't even ready for us sensually dancing to Katy Perry. So I don't think they would have been, I don't think anybody would have been quite ready for that. So I think also great art is considered great art with the timing it has. Like Mona Lisa, if that was done today, maybe it wouldn't be the Mona Lisa. But it was done during whatever time that was done in. And that was like, oh my god, wow, like... These people used rock residue, water, and sticks to make this. And that's art. You know, so I just don't think it would have been fully appreciated. And if, if, if your art isn't appreciated, should I allow those eyes to see it? So I'm happy with my decision. I stand by it. But that song, that's, that's definitely one of my karaoke favorites. I haven't done it live in karaoke. I haven't found the right time. But when I do... Everybody will be sorry. Number nine. So this was also in my senior year of high school. I remember my mother gave me toast in the morning. I ate it and I said, mom, that was disgusting. What did you put on my toast? And she was like, nothing. I just put butter. Because in my mouth, I tasted like I was eating. It tasted. I tasted. It tasted like I was eating what I imagine porridge tastes like. That consistency that I have in my mind. I don't know what porridge really is, to be honest with you. But it was like what caviar looks like. That's what I thought I tasted, but not caviar. Just the texture of it, right? I was like, why does toast taste like this? And then I went to the bathroom and I was brushing my teeth. And then I realized all the water was coming out of my mouth on one side of my mouth. And I was like, wait a minute. 
there's something very, very wrong. I don't know what it is, but there's something very, very wrong. And I was like, mom, like, is there something like I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, like my mouth wouldn't close. Like my lips area would not close. So the water was coming right out when I was swishing it back and forth while brushing my teeth. And I told my mom and she was like, oh my God, are you okay? Like, are you okay? Did you have a stroke? Because like half of my face was not moving. One side was and the other side wasn't. So your girl had facial palsy. Which is what Sylvester Stallone has. And facial palsy is when you have paralysis on one side of your face. So I can only move one side. It was really one of the craziest experiences of my life. Like when I would smile, only half my face would move. When I would flare my nostrils or, um, you know, move my nose in any way, only one side would move. And you could feel only one side moving. And I, was, I remember looking in the mirror, I was like, this is just... It's like a parallel universe. Like I, I never... Like you see that. You know, you see people have it, but I just never thought of it, you know, and what it would be like. And I went to a doctor all the way up on some mountain... I remember traveling up there and they said that I got it from a cold wind, supposedly a cold wind, because I don't wear like winter apparel. Like I see how long I can go and then I usually go the whole winter without wearing like a jacket. I wear a sweater and I rock for it. Um, You know, white people usually don't get cold like that. So, but now that I'm getting older, I am cold a lot of the time. Like I'm a lightweight now. So I wear coats and everything now. But back in high school, I didn't wear coats. And I would never wear hats. I hate winter hats. I hate the way they feel. I hate the way they look. And, you know, I, like, what's the point for me? I, I, I don't like it. So the doctor said that it possibly was from a heavy cold wind hitting my, the side of my face, going through my ear and knocking one of my nerves out. So that that, you know, dislodged you know, one of the nerves that would make my face move normally, that that was out of place, so my face was not moving correctly. And that was crazy. I had to go to school, and I was talking to my friends, and I told, I told like, my close friends I had it, but I remember some people in my class were like, um, are you okay? Like... Only half of your face is moving. And I was like, yeah, I have facial palsy. And everybody was like, like people were gasping and they were like really scared. Like one person was like about to call 911. And I was like, no, it's okay. It's fine. You know, um, I think that's before I went to the doctor too. So I was like, oh, you know, I I don't even really know what it is. I was hoping it was just going to go away. You know, that I woke up with half my face, you know, still in the other part, you know, moving. And I I thought it was just going to go away. Like the common cold. Um, Absolutely not. That did not happen. I had to go to... Uh, physical therapy and that was really interesting too because they had to use like electrical stimulation so they put like the things when they put on your chest but they put that on your face like the little pads with the wires attached to it and it would forcibly but comfortably first they would give me a massage so I was like this is great like I could have facial palsy for a few more months but uh so the electrical stimulation was they shoot electricity through those through the wires through the pad onto your face and it moves your mouth your nose and your eyes completely to to one way and then the other so like it would close my eye completely and then move my nose all the way up all the way down and my mouth like I was smiling and then I was frowning because it's stimulating all of those nerves that aren't being used at all I'm very blessed that it did go away and I had no problems with it. I just had to wear an eye patch at night. Um, That was also interesting. I had to wear an eye patch every night until it went away. Because my eye wouldn't close. So that was really, really a time to remember. And I'm just lucky because, you know, some people you can get stuck with the the effects of it for your whole life like some sometimes it only goes away 75 percent 50 percent but mine went away 100 percent and I'm very lucky but yeah there's not many jokes there I mean it was very serious scary because I didn't really know like what 
what the hell is that? You know, you wake up and it's like, oh, like what is happening there? What What is going on on the, the right side of my face region, you know? But it's, that definitely makes my list because that was an insane time. Number 10. Number 10 is actually a two-parter and part one of number 10 is the time when I was on air with Todd and Jade in the morning on WPLJ. I was actually on air twice um, when I was an intern there and I came up with a talk topic. Um, A talk topic is something that they will discuss on air, one of the topics, and I came up with people that have accidentally stole something has accidentally walked out of a store or ended up stealing something and they loved it they wanted to talk about it on air and they asked if I had any experience in that area and I have I've actually done that multiple times not on purpose just because I'm clueless but I am honestly so excited to share this with you shout out to my cousin Chooch for the audio but I hope that you are ready and mentally prepared to hear Fetus Mary on air with WPLJ. Here we go. My grocery card and I didn't pay for it. Maybe it's something as simple as that, but if you've accidentally stolen anything, 800-321-WPLJ, or you can text to 95955. Our our summer intern, Mary Grace, is a, well, she's a klepto. Apparently. Yeah, she is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, uh, the Port Authority police are going to be coming after oh, MG here pretty soon, right? <laughs> So, Mary Grace, what happened? What you, what you steal yesterday? Um, it wasn't yesterday. I was like 10 or 11, and I was reading a joke book, and I had it right in front of my face, and I was so enthralled with this joke book because I love comedy. Uh-huh. So I walked out of CVS, <laughs> and then I realized I was like in my car reading this book, and I was like, oh, my God, I have to run back. See, first so- of all, you're already lying because you said you're in your car. You're 10, you don't have a car. So we know <laughs> already that this happened yesterday. <laughs> no, go ahead. So you were just reading a book, and you yeah. were so enthralled, you walked right out. Yes, and I, then I was terrified. I was like, I have to bring this back. My dad's like, just take it. You know, you're already in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad, he was an accessory to the yes. crime? And then I ran in, and I was like, I ran with my hands up, with a book in my hands, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Please don't arrest me. And everybody in CVS just looked at me like, this child is like losing oh. her mind. And then that, that was it. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's great. It was a good time. I enjoyed it. You know what's so <laughs> great about this story, even better than Mary Grace being on the air with us right now and t- talking about being a klepto, is the fact that both Annie and Johnny are videotaping her because she's super nervous and excited right. to be on the show. Oh. I love all of you. <laughs> you have to document the first time on the yes, air. You don't remember your first time going on the microphone? I wish I had the video of that. Absolutely. Aww. Thank you guys. You did a good job. <laughs> Thank you. Guys. Oh, good job, Mary yeah. Grace. Get out of here, you robber. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, we're, parents are, we're, we're rewarding her. Yeah, I need parents to go are probably so proud, right? <laughs> yes. This is the first time they hear you on the radio is about you stealing something. <laughs> Klepto, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Imagine I have fans now. I smile every time I hear that. That was such a happy time for me. I think that was the second time I was on. The first time I talked about when I took the stripping class. We spoke about interesting classes that people have taken. But yeah, I have so many fond memories of working with Todd and Jade in the morning. Um, the phone screener was is a good friend of mine. And all around, just a wonderful time. And if I did scrapbooking, I mean, there would be some pages about WPLJ in there. So very grateful for the experience. And that was part one. Part two is when I performed at Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. And I actually performed there twice. I performed there twice. Uh, Both times were for my stand-up one and stand-up two class final. And that's just another, like, time capsule moment for me. Because moments. Moments. Momentos. Because... So many legends have performed there. And those are some of the greatest moments and accomplishments of my life that meant a lot to me. And I like there's room in my heart for certain things. And all of these things, well, maybe not all of them, actually. No, no, no. Not the facial palsy. Not the guy. Not uh, Where's Waldo. None of that. I mean, just like number 10, Gotham and WPLJ. They share a nice little space in my heart. I Like, I dreamt of that moment since I was a child, so that it actually came to fruition. Like, I, you know, I manifested that. 
So it's a beautiful thing. I'm so blessed. I still reflect on that time. And my stand-up is on my YouTube channel. And you just search Mary Grace Sopran. That's Mary Grace C-Z-A-P-R-A-N. And I have my stand-up on there. I have some of my Mary on the streets. That's when I interview people. One was about sex on ice. And another one was about foraging with a man who eats berries and seeds for a living. I have a two-part web series that I did for my college capstone, which is my college final. And it was actually, um, it was based on The Office. I did like a mockumentary style thing. And I met Kevin from The Office when I went to a minor league baseball game. I got his autograph and I told him that I did that. And he was like, that's so cool. So, I, what, I, was I expecting a little bit more, uh, you know, of a different answer? Yes. You know, I was hoping he was going to ask for that link. But he didn't. But it was pretty cool. And he seemed genuinely happy that I, that I based my entire college career on the office so that's really good times you've checked that out you know smash that like or don't but uh, yeah, i love to talk to people so i mean if you watch it and you want to talk to me about it hit me up hit me up hit me up but you could check that out on my youtube thank you so much for tuning in to part two of there's something about mary special the there's something about mary special which is my 10th episode special Hopefully you enjoyed the countdown and there's tons of moments that didn't make the list that you'll be hearing about soon because this is my life. But thanks again and don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment. Oh, before I close out, you know when they do the record scratch? Um, I just want to check myself before I wreck myself. So the other day at four in the morning, I was thinking about Flava Flav. That's when I usually think about that man. But... I want to correct myself when I was talking about Flavor Flav, Danger Smash the Homie. That's from For the Love of Ray J. So my apologies for misleading the public. Um, I, but I was still happy I got to speak about New York versus Pumpkin because that's, that's absolutely iconic to me. She should get a... New York should get a star on the Walk of Fame in Los Angeles for that performance. I was in awe as a, in, I was in awe as a child and I'm in awe now as an adult. Um, love that. Cue the Nat Geo music in the background. Um, and I was I was only 10 years old when I was watching that, which is mind-boggling to me. And everybody in my class watched it, too, and we all had discussions about it. But yeah, I remember... It's 2006, but, you know, don't blame my parents, because they put my ass to sleep. <coughs> that was me getting upset that my phone went off during my podcast, because I thought it was on silent. But I'm gonna leave it in there, because it made me laugh. So, like I was saying, don't blame my parents because they put me to bed watching Teen Nick and then I pretended to be sleeping. And as soon as they left, I sat up, pulled the popcorn from under my blankets, and I watched shit happen. So, multiple snacks, a great time, and I think that's where my, you know, my unconscious mind, that's where the whole I wanted grills as a child came from. And I still want them now, to be honest with you. But uh, my parents said no, and I don't have money. So I guess you won't see me with them anytime soon. But Flav or Flav. On that note, I'm going to end it. So peace out and love always. Gang. <laughs>